Hey people, welcome back to the cabin. So on last week's episode of Carl's Off the Grid, we talked a little bit about uh, AC wiring and uh, we hung all of our electrical boxes and uh, prepared for that. This week we're gonna talk not only about AC wiring, but we're also gonna talk about DC wiring and the benefits of it. So thanks for joining us. We'd like to welcome our new subscribers and thank our continued subscribers for their support. So um, I think I'm gonna dive right into the meat of things. I'll show you um, how we did our wiring, why we did our wiring, what type of materials you should do, use, and more all this week on Carl's Off the Grid. Okay, so here's the electrical system in a nutshell. This is a 100 amp service box. Um, obviously, we're not gonna need 100 amps here at the cabin, but any power that comes from my solar setup or that comes from the generator is gonna go in here for our AC power. So this is gonna be a, we're gonna first talk about AC power only. So that's where the power is gonna originate to feed the cabin. You can see these wires. I ran through the walls. We have an electrical box here. And you can see two sets of wires that are sticking out of the box. One comes directly from the service. The next one is gonna be tied in by what we call a pigtail. Now I'll talk about pigtails a little bit later on, uh, but the wiring is gonna continue on and it goes up and it's gonna feed, oops, my shadow's in the way. That's gonna be our electrical box for the wall hung TV. And you notice again, two wires coming out of that box. Uh, we're gonna tie those in by a manner of a pigtail again. And then the power's gonna continue to go down and to feed this outlet here in the dark corner of <laughs> the cabin. And it's also going to go up to a box that's going to operate some light switches and a possible future ceiling fan. Just a minute ago, I talked a little bit about pigtails. What's a pigtail? Most of you probably know what a pigtail is. Um, but for those of you who don't know, I'm going to do one right now just to kind of show you uh, what it is. So when making a pigtail, here's how you make it. And after I show you how you make it, then we will talk about why it's beneficial. So you take the two sets of wires that you have coming in, peel back the insulation on them, strip off the ends. And you can see we have these two white wires on this side, two black wires on this side. You're gonna twist those all together with an additional wire. So I would I already pre-cut off, this is probably way too long, but I pre-cut off another wire. We would um, wind these all together and then take the three blacks, wind the three blacks all together. And then at the end, when you have these two, uh, wires that are, are left, then you would wire those to the outlet. Now, why are we wiring it this way? Why is it beneficial to use a pigtail? Because if anything further down, if this ever bl blows or has any problems and you don't have these all tied together, all the outlets that are downstream of this outlet are all gonna lose power and you won't have any idea why, which one went bad. When you tie them all together, if this one blows, only this one will go bad. The power still has the ability to transfer further down the line, if that makes sense. All right, folks, I'm gonna show you real quick uh, some of the differences between AC and DC lighting. Um, with AC, I don't know if you can see that, that wire is a solid wire. Um, it's gonna help conduct power the best way that AC can. With DC, take a look at this wire. It's all strands, see all the strands that are bending over? When you wire DC, 
Make sure that you have stranded wire. It's very essential. Um, and in my preference, I kind of like it. It's a little bit funner. Instead of it uh, all coming wrapped in one pack, mine, I'm going to have red wire, and I'm also going to have black wire. So I'll run those two wires together through the wall, strap it and hang it appropriately, so on and so forth. Another difference is going to be with AC wiring. We go ahead and we have it ran through our 100 amp uh, breaker box. With DC wiring, it's going to be a little bit different. And I actually picked up what I think is pretty cool. Um, the kids are going to really like this when they come up to visit. Um, this is a little uh, panel that you would put like in your boat or an RV. Each one of these little switches here lights up with a blue light. So at nighttime, you'll be able to see where this is real easy. Um, it's got, you can see right there, that's where you plug in like a cigarette lighter uh, like you'd have in your car or whatever. So if you have any accessories for us before we get a refrigerator, the only thing that we can use to keep our food cool is we do have a electric cooler that works off this outlet here. And then in this other outlet, you can see we have two more additional ports to be able to charge um, our cell phones and things of that nature. So that's pretty cool. And then the center dial here, that's going to be give me a readout and it's going to tell me um, how much power is left in my battery bank. So that's why I chose to go ahead with this route. Let me go get a light. Um, I'll show you what my lights uh, look like. You're going to look at this light and you're going to think I'm crazy. It actually is, it's called a reading light. It's LED. It only draws, I think it's 3.12 watts of power. So it uses barely any energy. I can't take credit for coming up with this idea. I watched another YouTuber who put these lights on his trap line and uh, it lit his cabin up like a Christmas tree. Here's the light that I have chosen. This is just the body of it. The LED light bulb is still in the package. Um, there's no reason for me to take it out at this time. And you're going to say, wow, Carl, that thing is really small. There's not much there. This can mount directly on your ceiling, and you can point it at whatever area of the room you want uh, lit up. Um, it works off of that breaker panel that I showed you earlier, or if I have this like in our uh, loft areas where the kids are going to be sleeping, if you don't want to get out of bed, to go all the way over to the switches and turn it off, it does have its own little switch right on the light itself as well. So you can just turn it off right from leaning over your bed. I'm going to be wiring these right through my um, charge controller. I don't have to uh, power these through my inverter, which is a huge plus because for any of you who have solar or have used power, uh, solar power, uh, when you run it through your inverter, there is a power drop that happens from just running your inverter. I heard rumors of it being as much as like 20% of your power is lost by using an inverter. So these will all be wired directly to my charge controller. I won't have that energy loss, that energy draw, uh, additional energy draw, draw uh, draining my battery bank. So that's why I've chosen these, and that's why I'm going to light it up this way. It's the most efficient thing you can do. Okay, folks, I have all of the AC wiring in, as far as rough is concerned. Um, I'll show you on this wall back here. This is going to be the central location, obviously. You can see all the wiring that's there, where I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my fuse box and I'm gonna put that switch uh, mechanism that I showed you earlier that uh, is illuminated by those blue lights. All that's gonna go here, right above my countertop, or where the countertop will be in the future. And um, there's reasons for that. I think this is gonna be a central location of the house. I kind of debated between doing it here and at the front door, uh, but I decided not to do it at the front door because I do have solar lighting that is ordered for my porch so that when I come up here, I am going to have adequate light at the porch as well as the home when I first enter it. So 
I'll go ahead and I'm going to reverse the camera and I'll show you what I did. Okay, on the ceiling, every spot where I'm going to add a light, I went ahead and I put in some wood backing. And you can see the wires hanging down from the wood backing. That is going to be all my solar uh, lighting, the stuff with the red and black wires. Now the stuff with this big white uh, Romex that's coming through, that's going to be a ceiling fan I'm going to have here just in case of emergency. I'll probably use it sparingly on my solar because I don't want to um, use up everything. Here again, this is going to be the area where my fuse box is going to be and the main controlling switch for turning on and off all my solar power. It also has a digital readout telling me how much is on my batteries. Um, I went ahead and I went up through a chase there to get uh, the wiring in my loft where I am sleeping right now. Um, you can kind of see it hanging off the ceiling back in there. And then the uh, big main lines that I'm running here. Um, I'll have to check the gauge on this. I'm not sure what this is 10 gauge now that I'm thinking of it. I use that big uh, thick red 10 gauge wiring. I just have it laying loose right now underneath the main breaker box. I'm going to have to figure out a way to have that go outside this wall without causing too many problems with, um, uh, with rodents getting in or ants getting in or anything of that nature. And then uh, here again, you can see right up above this area that's going to probably end up being the sleeping quarters. Um, I've got two lights that are roughed in too. I just grabbed some old two by fours, scabbed them in there and drilled the center of it and let the um, wire come through. Uh, I didn't care what type of lumber I use there because this is just rough construction. Nobody will ever see that and that's just there for anchoring purposes. So I feel pretty good. We got all the AC is done, all the DC is done. Um, oh you can see my Milwaukee light right there uh, lighting up the cabin right now. So we're in good shape right now. I think I'm ready to go ahead and uh, put in the interior walls. All right, I appreciate you coming along with me this week on Carl's Off the Grid. We showed you the simple wiring system that I'm going to go ahead and use for the cabin. And um, I think the next video or two, maybe we're going to do something that's a little bit more entertaining. I wanted to use this in a, as an instructional video to uh, explain to people that are curious about off the grid wiring, uh, how they could do it. Uh, again, not to be real repetitive, but not only is it going to affect us people that are building off the grid and using solar setups, uh, anybody who wants to camp or uh, I say that loosely, if you have a camper or an RV or anything like that, um, you can wire your uh, DC basically the same way that I went ahead and wired the cabin. So um, everything's in. I just have a couple loose wires that I want to put some hangers on and some proper supports. And um, I'll just do the fine tuning, things like that. Next on the list is I'm going to go ahead and start getting my, um, my wood siding ordered for the interior here. I think I am going to go with tongue and groove on the lower parts of the walls. And then the ceilings. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I've kicked around what might be the best looking idea. And I think I'm going to go with an old rustic, like corrugated tin siding on the roof. On the, or I shouldn't say on the roof, on the interior, on the ceiling. And I've seen it done in a couple other cabins that are out there. And it really looks sharp. Um, and I like it because... Uh, not only does it look aesthetically pleasing to the eye, but when I go ahead and I put my wood burning stove in, I think it's probably going to be a little bit more safer to have that around the smoke pipe as it exits the, um, the roof of the home. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining me on this week's episode of Carl's Off the Grid. I'd like to thank again my existing subscribers and welcome any new subscribers that we have uh, to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd like to urge you to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free entertainment. Um, and then hit the bell button. It'll notify you every time I have a new video that comes out. 
Um, and if you don't mind, if you could share this with a friend, that'd be great as well. It helps pro promote the channel, and then uh, YouTube will start uh, giving me some slots where I'll get a little bit more recognition and be able to bring more of this type of content to you. So, all right, we'll catch you next week on Carl's Off the Grid.